Bonjour to the monde. That was freaking sick. I'm actually here right now. Time for the stadium fact of the day. Time for best of the ballpark. This place is insane. It's a final here from the Target Centers. I'm checking off a bucket list one stadium at a time. Hey guys, welcome back to Garrett Stadium Travel. This is stadium vlog number 29. Right now I'm in Dallas, Texas, but as you can see by the title, I'm not staying here. I got a 5 a.m. flight to Houston, where today I'll be watching the Houston Texans take on the Tennessee Titans at NRG Stadium. Now, I was kind of concerned this game was going to be kind of a dud. Obviously, the Texans haven't been a great team in past years, and the Titans aren't doing very well this year. But C.J. Stroud was out with a concussion the last couple of weeks. He's back. Will Levis, rookie quarterback, also back. There's been some injuries on both sides, but Derrick Henry could be playing one of his last games as a Titan. As of right now, we don't know, but I'm super excited to see some of those players play today. Uh, it's a Battle Red H-Town uh, last regular season game at home for the Texans, so super excited. All of that is going down in just a couple of hours, so got an Uber waiting for me. Going to go catch that and uh, head off to Houston, so come along with me. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm up here in the 500 level of NRG Stadium and it's time for the stadium fact of the day. The stadium fact of the day today is all about the roof. NRG Stadium is the first stadium in the NFL to have a retractable roof. Now there are five stadiums that now have it, but this was the pioneer back in 2001 when this stadium first opened. I'm gonna, gonna explore this place a bit more, grab some food and then hopefully enjoy a great game. Let's go.
Alien Pierce, the ball carrier, finds his way ahead for five yards. I'll show you. It's a final here from NRG Stadium. The Texans won it 26 to three. This was a complete blowout, but I had a lot of fun. Uh, the Houston Texans fans really showed out today and their team is rewarding them for it. They're right in the playoff race and I'm hoping they get in. So hopefully they do. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna head back to the hotel and tell you guys what I saw. Peace out for now. Walking back to the train here in Houston, you pass a relic in sports history in the Astrodome. The Astrodome was home to pro sports in Houston for over 30 years, hosting the Astros, Oilers, and many others. This place was also the first stadium to install artificial turf, better known as AstroTurf, in 1966. The Astrodome is the reason why the Texans exist today, as the Oilers relocated to Tennessee because of the dispute between the city of Houston and Oilers owner Bud Adams over a new stadium. Houston was awarded the Texans in 1999, and the rest is history. Who knows how the NFL would have shaken out if the Oilers got their stadium and stayed in Houston. It's all hearsay now, but it's all fun and games to kind of speculate and explore where the league and where sports could be if, uh, if this place wasn't of so much controversy uh, inside and out. So uh, it was a great day here in Houston. I said it once, but I'll say it again. Get a head back to the hotel and then tell you guys what I saw from that stadium over there, Energy Stadium. Let's go. Hey guys, just got back to the hotel and I'm going to tell you guys what I saw from NRG Stadium. So first up is atmosphere. I thought the atmosphere was really good. I wasn't expecting too much out of, uh, out of Texans fans, but they really, really surprised me. I was really pleasantly surprised with uh, the Texans crowd. It was a rowdy crowd. It was a really good crowd. They were getting loud. Um, yeah, it was good. The bullpen, I wanted to shout them out. Those sections, I was going to sit over on those sections, but I found a better deal on the other side of the stadium. Um, but they're always standing. It's the loudest part of the stadium. So if you want a really good fan experience uh, and you like getting rowdy, definitely sit in the bullpen. It was close to a sellout today. Not quite there, but the fans that did show up, they got loud, they got down with their team. And I think the team rewarded them for it with a huge win. Uh, there was also some pretty good fan engagement. I thought it was pretty good. The Texans Toro, he's a madman. I think he's one of the best mascots in the league. Um, the dangling from the roof, ah, geez, props, props to him or her who's in the suit because, oh, couldn't be me. Um, next up is venue. 
Uh, Energy Stadium is an older venue. It's kind of showing its age. It's almost 30 years old, which is crazy. Um, and it's kind of showing its age. The seats, a lot of the seats are kind of getting decrepit. So if they were going to do a renovation, definitely repa replacing a lot of the seating. Um, there's a lot of concrete around this place, uh, which is kind of, you know, synonymous with those early 2000s uh, stadiums. So kind of makes sense. Some good things. It's air conditioned, um, which, I mean, it was a hot day out today for uh, late December. So having that air conditioning was definitely a good thing. Uh, some other kind of downsides is there weren't a lot of like social areas. It was a lot of just concourse. Uh, there weren't a lot of areas to, you know, grab a drink, kind of not sit down, but just kind of stand at tables. It was a lot of just packed concourse uh, for the kind of game that it was. So you would have liked to see some more social areas that aren't, you don't need club tickets or whatever to, uh, to enjoy. And lastly, there's a lot of levels to this place. I did a lot of walking before this game. Uh, I got there kind of later than I wanted to. So I was kind of jogging and running to get all the stuff I needed to do done. Um, all the shots I wanted, but uh, yeah, six levels to this place. There is a lot of seats here. Um, I can see why they host Super Bowls because enough enough people in seats at uh, Energy Stadium, I'll tell you that. But um, yeah, a lot of levels. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously with renovation, you can't change that, but there's a lot of levels, 600 levels. I, or 600, six levels. I didn't I don't think I've ever been to a stadium that's had six. I think maybe SoFi, but I think SoFi only went up to 500. So that's a first, I think, for me. Uh, yeah. So next up is Access. I thought Access was pretty good. You have the red line train that gets you downtown. So if that's where you're staying, that's going to be your go-to. There's also a couple other lines. I know there's like a, a maroon line, I think, on Google Maps. But that gets you kind of, I think, east. But there's nothing to the west. Um, and it's not a super intricate, intricate system. I'm sure there's buses, but I like when it's, when it's rail for sure. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Maybe a bit above average. And then the parking's pretty good. There's lots of it. It's kind of one of those parking lot stadiums where there's not a lot to do right within the stadium. Pretty good tailgate scene though. And, uh, some pretty good highway access. You can get where you need to go if you're staying in the suburbs or if you live outside of Houston, then it's, uh, it's pretty accessible. And last up is pricing. I thought pricing was the best part of this stadium, uh, being that the Cowboys are the other team in your state. Uh, and where I was yesterday, it was um, it was a nice surprise getting lower bowl tickets four rows from the uh, from the field for I think it was a hundred and some dollars. It was uh, really good. They also have uh, it's called Fan First deals on food. I know that was done by the Falcons first, but the Texans are following suit. You can get water, like a thing of water. It's not big, but it's $2, which is great. Because when I'm thirsty, I am i don't want to pay $6 for a Dasani thing that's just going to make me more thirsty. So um, yeah, it's good that they have the fan first deals to uh, for those people that do want to save money, want to go to the game, want to get food, but don't want to spend an arm and a leg. They can have those options, which is good. And then the cheap tickets I already mentioned and the parking deals on game day. You'll get emails. Uh, promotional stuff throughout the week from the Texans or if you buy tickets and stuff like that and part of that is discounts on parking as you get closer to the event which is good so if you don't mind waiting until the day of or the day before to buy parking they do have deals like that and they also had some deals in the team shop that I took advantage of but I think that was just because it's the last regular season home game fan appreciation type thing so I'm not sure if that's going to happen for other games but don't take my word for it uh, who knows? I don't think so, though. So uh, with that, my final ranking for NRG Stadium is an 8 for atmosphere, a 6 for venue, a 7 for access, and a 8 for pricing, bringing it to a total of 29 out of 40. I thought this, this was a pretty good game day experience. I, I think the venue isn't great. The, the venue isn't great, but I think it's less about the venue that makes the score above average and more about the fans and the cost of the experience that makes it good. So yeah, uh, Texas fans, you showed out today. I was, I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting much, but you guys really surprised me today. So good for you. Good for you. Um, I hope you guys make the playoffs. Obviously when this video comes out, it's going to be long past the playoffs, but I hope you guys did from uh, current uh, Garrett Stadium travel. 
So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this kind of content, sports content, stadium content, uh, I'm traveling all over North America watching pro major sports teams at their home arenas and stadiums. So if that's the kind of content you like to see, uh, make sure you make it known and uh, follow along with the journey. So with that, uh, I'm checking off a bucket list one stadium at a time, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.